it's okay, I'll tell you what. It's okay, it's okay. We're, we're consenting adults. You sound in a great mood tonight. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Yeah. 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 You know, I first walked on the show with this fuzz last night. And it started out as just something I wanted to do on vacation. And it's gotten out of hand now. They're taking polls whether I should shave this or keep it. What do you think? Do you like this? I heard from Julio Iglesias today. He saw it and wanted to do a duet with me. <laughs> you know one of the problems I found? What's that? Twice I've been mistaken for a Russian woman. <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of silly. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Anyway, I'll tell you, it's worth all the trouble growing it because I've had a lot of movie offers come in. Oh, yeah? And I'm... The movie role of a lifetime, the Yasser Arafat story. <laughs> I may get rid of this sooner than I thought. I came in the studio this afternoon, and you know our old security guard, Pops? Yeah. He said, <laughs> he said, hey, Gabby, long time no see. <laughs> so, anyway, we got a good show tonight. You look, now, you see, I should talk with Doc. He's had hair on his face for a long time. Is there any advantage to this? Well, yeah, it strains the wrong notes out. What are coming through there? You mean when you play the trumpet, it actually filters out no, clinkers? I actually grew this to spite my first wife. Uh, well. <laughs> I'll probably lose half of this. <laughs> No, honey, the stubble is in the mail. <laughs> Ed got some good news today. They're naming a wing after him at the Betty Ford Clinic. Congratulations. Thank I thought, no. Thank not you. <laughs> you see the picture in the paper, the line of people at the Pentagon today trying to sell their toilet seats? Yeah. You read about that, didn't you? The Pentagon was paying approximately $600 of our money for a plastic cover that went over a, a toilet in an airplane. Lockheed today apparently dropped the price to $100. Little, little oversight there. Yeah. And they're, they're returning something like $35,000 to the government. Well, and I think they should. What else happened? I don't know why I brought that up. <laughs> How many of you read about the Oscar nominations today? They were announced today? Yeah. I'm not hosting the Oscars this year. I'm doing a more pleasurable task. I'm having root canal work. <laughs> Uh, Amadeus, um, which is based on the uh, life of Mozart. Mm -hmm. uh, Passage to India. Did you see that picture? Received the most nominations, 11 each. India's hot. Yeah. Last year, Gandhi, right? This year, Passage to India. I think the Academy went a little too far, though, with best supporting sacred cow. <laughs> it's a long way to go for very little. <laughs> Do you realize the biggest grossing picture of the year received no nominations? Beverly Hills Cop? That's true. But the Motion Picture Academy asked Eddie Murphy not to foreclose on the Music Center uh, <laughs> so the award ceremonies can go on there. Today is the president's birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday, Mr. President. He is 74. Yeah. I mean, he's incredible looking for 74. They had a cake with all the candles on it. The heat melted all the jelly beans in the jar. <laughs> <laughs> no, the president had a big day. He cut the cake, then he cut the hot lunch programs, then he cuts... <laughs> <laughs> then he cut student loans. Anyway, our budget director, David Stockman, is getting desperate. You know, we got a federal budget, I think, they asked for $973 billion for 1986, and he said the only way they're going to lower the deficit is if they get a letter from Ed McMahon saying, congratulations, you may have already won $10 million. <laughs> if they don't win, the whole country's in trouble. Uh, tonight, as you probably know, was the president's State of the Union message, carried live on uh, NBC and CBS. You know what ABC is running? Dynasty. So at 9 o'clock, you can watch a rich guy who lives in a big house and a wife who spends a fortune on clothes, or you can watch Dynasty. <laughs> no, that's not. I, I, have, 
I have to apologize. That's not true. I did that for the sake of that joke. The joke was too good not to do it. <laughs> what happened? All the networks are carrying the State of the Union address, but the Democrats want to have a rebuttal to the President's State of the Union address after they finish, and ABC said they would not carry it. They're going to carry Dynasty instead. ABC said they will carry the rebuttal tomorrow. Do you get the feeling if the civil defense alarms ever go off for real, ABC will carry it the following night? <laughs> Can you imagine the choice now? Look what the Democrats have got. Tonight, they're going to have Democratic politicians against Ali McGraw and Joan Collins. Who do you think will get the ratings? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it was carried by all three, and I guess tomorrow is, is the rebuttal. Um, here's a report out of Washington that's kind of interesting. It was in the paper today. Guess who seem to be very good friends lately? Senator Ted Kennedy and who? Falwell. Jerry Falwell. They're sitting together, conservative and liberals. They say they, uh, they could dine together. Um, they prayed together, and uh, they said they really like each other. Huh? <laughs> if you believe that, you'll also believe that General Wars Westmoreland will be shopping at Kmart for toilet seat covers. <laughs> right. If I could have got that one out, that might have gone over. Well, I have to strain these jokes through my beard. And that's what anyway, we have a good show for you tonight. We have um, a fine young man, a good actor. Ricky Schroeder is with us from Silver Spoon. Yeah. A lovely actress, Lisa Eilbacher, is with us tonight. And, gentlemen, gentleman was with us a couple of months ago. He is from the uh, state of Louisiana. He has a, a show down there on Cajun cooking. How many, how many of you know about Cajuns and what Cajun cooking? Okay, he is here. Mr. Justin Wilson is with us tonight. And a lot of other things will happen. So, thanks for coming. <laughs> Anything to report? More and more. You're looking like <coughs> Paul Muni <laughs> and Louis Pasteur. Was that Louis Pasteur he had that beer? Sure. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of silly, but I'm stuck with it. I feels, like it. Feels good to get up in the morning and not, not have to scrape shave. your oh, face. Oh, boy. What a joy that is. Well, that's kind of torture. Women don't have to go through it. Well, you shave your legs, but you know, you don't do it every day, do you? Yeah. yeah. Do you? I didn't know women shave their legs every Depends day. Depends on the you? leg. What? Depends on the leg. I suppose that's true. Some guys. Yeah, well, that would be true, of course. Uh, what was I going to say? I had something in the... Well, I had... Did you ever do that? Yes. I just was ready to say something. And, and you mentioned... Louis Pasteur. And you mentioned line. Louis Pasteur and Paul Muni. Anyway, I guess it wasn't that important. Anyway, if you just joined us, Ricky Schroeder is here, Lisa Eilbacher, um, Justin Wilson. Have you ever seen Lisa Eilbacher? No. You haven't? I don't think so. Fine-looking lady. What is... Yeah. Now, she is, well, she's in a picture. It's on cable right now. The... Uh, with, uh, uh, with Charles Bronson, Bronson, plays his daughter. Hills She's in Beverly Hills Cop. I haven't seen that yet. Hmm? Officer, Officer and a Gentleman? Did you, did you go out at all? I did see Officer and a Gentleman. <laughs> well, she was not the officer. No. Or the gentleman. And she wasn't Deborah Winger. Yeah. No. Anyway, today, is, is today Martin? No, not, no, on a, March 25th. That's not today, right? No. No. On <laughs> what that beard is affecting your brain. <laughs> Actually, it grows into the head, and it's all going up into the... Um, it says here on March 25th, the 57th Annual Academy Awards will be held. The nominees... I was going to say March 25th, because they were announced today, and obviously it's not March 25th, so forget that. Try February 6th. It's today? Yes. That's what they were announced today. Do yeah. you know who was nominated for Best Picture? Amadeus? The Killing Fields, A Passage to India, Places in the Heart, and A Soldier Story. Other leading contenders are The River, The Natural, and 2010. And I, I guess that is the greatest honor that a motion picture or an actor or actress can receive as an Academy Award nomination. But as you know, for every film that receives... What's wrong? No, no, it's all right. For every film that receives a nomination, <laughs> there are many, many, many disappointments. Yes. Uh, because there are hundreds of pictures made every year by independent producers, major film studios. They can't all win. <laughs> Did I seem to be going astray or something? <laughs> yes, you're yeah, right. Yeah. They can't all win. The competition is severe. <laughs> 
<laughs> and disappointments run rampant. And so we thought, because the, these pictures get no uh, exposure, the best we could do is give these unheralded pictures a little spotlight of their own. What a thoughtful gesture. So I'm going to show you some of the still pictures that the studios furnished us. We couldn't get the actual film? <laughs> no, we couldn't get the actual film. <laughs> because they're out showing them some. Oh, I see. Because they're unheralded. Yeah. But we do have some publicity photos taken from these pictures, as you understand, that did not receive an Oscar nomination. Uh, if you want it in the studio, if you look at the monitor, you will see these pictures. If you don't look at the monitor, this will mean absolutely nothing to you. And you'll be sitting looking at me and say, what is so... All right. First movie, not nominated. This was a, this was a motorcycle movie. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if any of you saw it. It was about a gang of Weight Watcher bikers who ran amok in a Sara Lee cheesecake factory. It's called Hell's Hippos. <laughs> A little budget thing, played on, played on double bills and was not yeah. seen by a lot of people. Therefore, of course, was not up for Academy consideration. Another picture here. Uh, Disney Studios, for example, brought us this sequel called Pinocchio's Daughters. <laughs> a story about two girls whose noses grow a half inch every time they say, this is my first time. <laughs> of course, the Disney Studio fine conservative too would not make a picture like that because we don't want to get sued. No. Movie about a band of delinquent three-year-olds who took over their nursery school and flushed their teacher. <laughs> it was called Mutiny on the Potty. You can see why that didn't get a nomination or a laugh. <laughs> this was a movie about a rabbi who gives phone advice to kosher butchers. From the producers up to kill a mockingbird comes to kill a matzo ball. <laughs> this was a spy movie, believe it or not, about an 11 year old who got caught selling cookie secrets to the Russians. It's called The Falcon and the Brownie. <laughs> Look, nothing, not everything is a pearl. Once in a while, an oyster spits out what? Yeah. An irregular. That's right. That was an irregular. <laughs> Let's try this one. Farm movies. In fact, a lot of the actresses nominated were uh, Places in the Heart was about Sally Field, a farm girl. Wasn't Sissy Spacek? Uh, wasn't she in something that had... Uh, the River? Yeah, The River. Farm movies are very big. It sets yes. this up. Sure. Are very big. This is a film about a struggling widow who tries to save her land from foreclosure by giving a sits bath to the banker who holds the mortgage. It's called... Places in the tub. <laughs> okay. This was a horror movie about an insane vegetarian. Yes, about an insane vegetarian who terrorizes Los Angeles by forcing people to look at the piece of spinach caught in his teeth. <laughs> Called the creature from the salad bar. And this is a bad picture. Here's another movie centered around a race. This time it's a gay bicycle race called Chariots of Fire Island. <laughs> and this is a war movie, believe it or not. The San Diego Chicken made his dramatic debut. Here he bids farewell to his children as he goes off to the front lines in from here to Colonel Sanders. <laughs> mild, mild. This was a documentary called The Making of the Wizard of Oz. In this scene, the Wicked Witch of the West describes how the wizard got his name. <laughs> this is a movie about a jockey who works hard and finally attains his dream of becoming a paper towel in a men's room at the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> From the creators of National Velvet comes National Viva. <laughs> All right. Prison movie about a lifer who gets put in solitary and starts to knit brassieres for companionship. It's called The Boob Man of Alcatraz. <laughs> Hated to do that. This was an adventure film that uh, was shot up in Northern California. <laughs> San Francisco Jones and the Temple of Doom. <laughs> Makes no sense at all. And here's a film about a prudential insurance salesman who goes to Gibraltar, falls in love. 
from, from, from the from the makers of Romancing the Stone comes Scoring with the Rock. There. Okay. <laughs> We've done our bit for low-budget yes. movies. So Ricky oh. Schroeder will join us in a moment, then Lisa Eilbacher and Justin Wilson. So we'll be back in just a moment. My first guest tonight, I'm sure you all know. I'm sure you all know this very talented, uh, nice young man. He is the star of uh, Silver Spoons, the NBC series. It's on Sunday nights at 7 o'clock. Would you welcome, please, Ricky Schroeder. <laughs> To see you again. Yeah, what is this here? Well, I don't know. Ah. Yeah. I'm getting one too. Are you looking forward to show? <laughs> Let me see that. Yeah, man, peach fuzz. You got a little fuzz there, haven't yeah. you? Are you looking forward to that? I remember when I was your age. <laughs> and you know what amazes me? The first time you appeared on the show, I think you were half of your age that you are now. You were about seven and a half the first that's, time you were on the right. show. You're 15 now? Yeah. I'll be 15 in two months. Good. God, you're growing up to be a, <laughs> yeah. a good looking gentleman. Thank you. And I remember when I was your age, I could not wait to start shaving. You know, because you feel like you're really, really starting to I've get up I've done it once or twice. I'll, I'll now, tell I know you, why wanna, you did it. I know why you did it, too. I'm going to tell you a story. All right. I used to have a complex about my eyebrows, because since there's... My sister always made... That's the, that's the thing she could get at me with. Yeah. And I, when I met... What was your met, complex? Well, she always said I had such big, bushy, black eyebrows since I had blonde hair. Well, look at Brooke Shields. Well, well so, yeah. so... I'm sorry. So I'm, I'm meeting President... <laughs> I'm meeting President Reagan now, okay? Yeah. And I'm meeting him that this morning. And I said, hey, I'm going to shave off my eyebrow. And I took my dad's electric razor and shaved it half the way off. All right? Yeah. My mom had a heart attack. She had a heart attack. But uh, so luckily, my hair went down, so they couldn't yeah. see it. It looks very good, though. Thank you. Did you, did you, did you always feel they were too, too well, bushy? Well, my mom, I guess. I, oh, yeah. I like them now. You know why I shaved at your age? Why? They told me that if you start shaving early, it'll grow in quicker. Remember that? Yeah. And you'd have to start shaving sooner. Because it's, it's part of becoming, uh, growing An up. An adult. Yeah. Do you Man. remember? Yeah. Are you looking forward to, to getting older? Uh, somewhat, yeah. Can't so, wait till I get my car. I was going to say. <laughs> there. Is that your Corvette outside? Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's the car I'm going to get, I think. You think so, New huh? Corvettes. Oh, that's good. Fast? Yeah. All right. Yeah, but, but drive, but uh, don't drive too fast. That's right, that's right. It'll really take off on you. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, there are three periods in a man's life. 16, yeah. 18. 18's your prime, right? <laughs> no, my prime is Saturday night. This coming Saturday. <laughs> That's what they say. Now, when you say prime... A physical condition. No, they say for a man it's around 27, 28 years of age. That's your prime? It's physically about 27, 28 for a man. Mm -hmm. A fighter comes in, the, the boxer comes right. in, he's on around 27. Sexually, they say... What? What are we talking about? <laughs> Sexually, right. they say uh, uh, around 18 and 20, 21. Between 18 and 21. Uh -huh. That's when you really are a... You're a bull. <laughs> <You're that. laughs> you're a stallion. You put it more scientifically <laughs> no. than I did, yeah. Do you, uh, do you remember the first time you were on the show? Yeah, I... no. You don't much remember No, much no, about no, it? I do, yeah. You just done uh, the... The uh, champ. The champ, yeah. of course. John Voight's son. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we talked about that, I know. Yeah. Do you remember anything else we talked about? Uh, the Queen of England? Queenie? She was on the show? No, no, no. I oh. remember I called her Queenie. Oh, yes. We when talked we first you met said her? the Queenie. Queenie. I know. Yeah. So, let me ask you. Do you have 15 and a half? You're going to be 15. Sure, yeah. Are you sure you've got girlfriends this age? Yeah, I'm going out. I don't have a real steady girlfriend. I'm yeah. Just playing around, you know. I mean... I know what you mean. Playing I mean, you know, just going out with a lot of girls. It's called playing so, the field. You're playing the field. Yes, right, because you don't want to get nailed down too soon. Right. You know. Take that from advice, you right? You got it. You got it. You got it. Experience. <laughs> you just listen to Judge Hardy here. <laughs> All right, I'll be, we'll, we'll talk some more about All this. All right. If you think, if you have any questions, Ricky... All right. Let me know, because I'm here to serve. Good. <laughs> we'll be right back. Stay where you are. How are you doing? You're looking good. Show man. Okay. 
What were you talking about? Women in general? Yeah, and cars. And cars. Yeah, yeah they go together, don't they? Is yeah. that why you're looking forward to getting your My, first car? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Independence, right? Mm -hmm. You can big up a girl. And go to the beach. You don't have to hang around the house that's in right. front of the folks and so forth. Yeah, that's 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 not bad. <laughs> uh, you say you just go. Somebody said you met a girl once at a movie and you exchanged numbers oh, or something. What, um, what was that about? <laughs> well, I met this little. I met this girl. She's only 11, but. Oh, what? Well, listen, listen. That's Slimer City. <laughs> I mean, I met her a few days ago. Yeah. And um, I guess, I don't know who told you about this, but yeah. we just talked a little bit and I got her phone number. And I'm going to be, there's only four years difference. I mean, what well, do you think is the right age between man and woman? You mean compatibly? Yeah. Actually, since men die be usually before women, you're finding now that women are marrying younger men. You know. Yeah. Sure, because the husband's usually poking up weeds and the wife is on the SS United States. Waiter! <laughs> Another daiquiri here on the insurance money. Uh, well, do I don't you, know. Do you, I, do, do I think rather, it's relative. I think it's, you know, depends on the two people. The do maturity. you rather older women, more experienced, or the younger, carefree type? I, uh... Yes. <laughs> uh, Why, I, uh, I want one that does not husband? know how to yell police. <laughs> I think it depends on, on the girl. Yeah. You see, now you said the girl is 11. But women are very deceptive nowadays because they mature very fast. And somebody who looks maybe 12 or 13 could be, you know, yeah. could be, looks like they're 16. She doesn't act 11. She more mature and fun. Yeah. Well, growing up 11. Yeah. Have you uh, gone out on a date or anything? No, no, no. I, 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 um, I saw Dungeon Master. Yeah. And uh, that's where we met. But Seems nothing. Seems horror movie. Yeah. Nothing has materialized no, past nothing, that. Nothing yet. Yeah. Here you're taking singing lessons. Well, yeah. I um I met with Paul Ankin in yeah. New York City. He's a good musician. And um, I might be going to his house in Carmel. Yeah. He has a studio there. And uh, I might want to start singing. Yeah. That's I a... like it a lot. Just for a hobby, maybe, or maybe something will come of it. Do you think it's easier in acting? Oh, it's tougher? a lot harder for me. Yeah, it is for most people to really I... sing really, really well. It's, it's harder. But, and uh, you're doing well. I like a challenge, you know? Yeah. It's fun. Good for you. I understand you're doing well in school. Somebody said you're getting... Uh, A's and B's? A's and B's, yeah. That's Working hard, though. Yeah, what are you taking? What do you like? I have biology. I have algebra. I have uh, government, Spanish, a number of things. Hablo usted español un poquito? Uh, soy de Ricardo. <laughs> That's all I, I am know. Ricardo. That's very good. <laughs> soy Ricardo. That's no, I know good. a little bit. Un poquito. Un poquito. Yes, muy bueno. Yeah. So... You want to stay with us tonight for a while? Yeah, yeah, I'll okay, hang around. We have uh, Miss uh, Eilbacher coming out. I think she might be a little old for you. <laughs> okay. But then again, you never know. She could be 11. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we'll find out. Stay Good. with us, okay? All right. We'll take a break. We're coming right back. <laughs> okay, we are back. Thank you, Doc. My next guest... Very lovely and talented actress who can be seen starring opposite Eddie Murphy in the hit movie Beverly Hills Cop. Would you welcome, please, Lisa Eilbacher. Hi. How you doing? I love your beard. Do you really? It's sexy. Uh, what, now, what does that mean? I don't well, know. Well, it means that I have been dating someone with a beard for four years, and you don't know what a beard is like until you've been around one. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, good things may ha be happening. But I don't know. <laughs> How old are you? Now, I want to check. How Mr. old am uh, I? You don't have to give me any. I'm just... 11. <laughs> is that good? Yeah, that's good. Am I all right? Yeah, that's okay. good. Okay. Is, isn't it true, though, that young ladies nowadays... I think scientifically mature faster physically than they did some years ago. They seem to, girls of 15 or 16 look 18 or 19, and they didn't used to. I don't think, unless I'm thinking of a different time zone. They do look older, but you need to grow a beard. I love beard. Yeah. You think so? Yes. Yeah, how are you? I'm terrific. Yeah, I I'm enjoy terrific. your work. Thank you. In fact, that, that movie is running. I could not think of the name. Oh, is it no. between 10 and... No, it's 10 to midnight. 10 to midnight. The one with the naked boy is trying to kill me. It's a disturbing picture. Yes, with Charles Bronson, and you play his daughter, who plays a detective. Well, and, there's a funny uh, story with that. It is the first time that I ever had to work with a naked person. 
The gentleman, well, the man usually that, the girl is... The uh, man that is, is running around killing all the women is naked when he kills that? them. What is his name? His name is Gene Davis. It's good Brad a... Davis's brother. He's a younger good actor. Brother. Good actor. Yeah. Very good actor. Anyway, he came on the set, and we had done all the clothed scenes first. So then he came on the set, and he had a uh, bathrobe on. And he said, uh, when I take this off and everyone gets their look, then I'm going to be very relaxed about this. This is going to be terrific. Well, I decided I am going to keep my eyes at eye level. That's it. The entire time we shoot, because I am not going to look. Right. I'd be too uncomfortable. I'd be very embarrassed if I looked. So I figured I'll just look at his face. So he proceeded to work and, and do his rehearsal with the robe, and he took it off, and I kept my eyes at eye level. And the next day he said to me, you have to look because you're the only one that hasn't looked, and you make me the most nervous. Isn't I said, I can't look at it. <laughs> so, well. We don't refer to it as, as it. We, it. Refer, okay. we refer to it as I him. Look. <laughs> anyway. Or Arnold or Murray or something like I, that. I, I couldn't look. I couldn't look. So what he did was he had his robe on, and we were doing another scene, and we were rehearsing. Uh -huh. And when he took his robe off, he had a great big red bow around him. <laughs> and... I almost had a heart attack. <laughs> at any rate, I, I looked at the red bow because it caught my attention, and I looked away like this. And he said, you looked. I said, no, I didn't. I didn't see a thing. He said, I feel fabulous. I oh, know fun. you've seen it, now I can work. That has to be very unusual, but the picture, this is one picture in which, th th that calls for it, because this young man is completely psychotic yeah, and disturbed, and a very distressing kind of Better picture. Better he than me. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you, you were an officer and a gentleman. Yes. You were in, and, uh, is that an, excuse me, I ask you how old you were, then I saw, looked at this ring, and Ricky, you may be out of the running. Ricky gave this to me uh, just that's before right. the show. Just, Ricky yeah. gave this to you before the show? They're putting nice things in Cracker Jack boxes. Like, uh, nothing personal, Rick. Uh, be, is that an engagement ring, or just uh, what you call a good time, or? Uh, it, no, no, I mean, what I, I didn't mean that. You know what I meant? Listen to me. That, no, I meant what they call sometimes a friendship ring. That's this, what I meant. Not a good time ring. This is an engagement ring. Really? Yes, it's an engagement ring. Does one say congratulations uh, to a, an intended bride to be, or? Ah, uh, well. I guess you do. Yes. Don't you? No, you don't. So you congratulate the groom. Yes. And you say, I hope you'll be That's very happy. Kiss the bride. Congratulate the groom. That's, That's right. right. That's right. I don't know when I'm getting married, though. I haven't decided. I'm wearing it because I like it. It's a nice fun. ring. It's very pretty. And uh, I haven't decided yet. Have you decided if you're going to get married? What happens if the engagement is off? Do you, I have to give you... it back. That's what Emily Post says. Emily Post says? Give it back. You have to give the ring back. You have to give the, the ring engagement. back. Well, suppose he breaks the engagement. I get the ring. <laughs> so obviously you're going that to force him into an untenable position. <laughs> no, is that, is that also from Emily Post? Yes. You give it back. If, if the engagement is off, whether he breaks it or you break it. I didn't know that. Give it back. Good. Well... I think I'm going to keep it, but I don't know. I mean, it depends on how long he'll let me have it before I have to answer. Yeah, do you believe in long engagements? Very long. <laughs> Very long. What does that, what do, what do that mean? Well, we got engaged in October, and I will be married anywhere from two weeks to two years. You know, somewhere well, around in there. It's, it's, yeah. it's open to uh, negotiations, huh? Yeah. You know how sometimes someone says, let's go to Vegas, let's get married, and it sounds like a fabulous idea. No, don't, don't do that. No, and then you say... Gee, you know, it did sound like a good idea, and you do a little thinking about it, and then you, and you let it run through your brain for a while, and then you decide, well, that's not what I want, or maybe I do want a big wedding, let's wait. Mm -hmm. I seem to be doing that a lot, vacillating. Would you like a, a large wedding? You get a lot of gifts that way. A lot of gifts? Yeah. And if I had a large wedding, then maybe... maybe I'd get a bigger diamond right here. <laughs> this guy's in trouble. <laughs> I'm just kidding. When I you mean... did Beverly Hills Cop, did you have any idea it was going to be the success it is. I mean, it's outgrossing any picture that's been out for I don't know how many years. Well, let's see. I think that we all had an inkling because Eddie is so talented. Now, right. the first day that I went on the set, I was a little nervous. I'd never done a comedy, and I'd never met Eddie. And we had to do this, this scene that took place in a hotel room, and there was a lot of dialogue. And it was very hot. We were shooting in the middle of the summer, and I had on a, a leather jacket and leather pants, and it was not comfortable. It was in a hotel room. And I remember laying down, and we got to my close-up, and I had to flop on the bed and do some giggling and some laughing at what he's saying. And I started to get very hot. And I'm in the middle of the scene, and the take is going on, and I feel the perspiration coming down the sides of my face. And I think, oh, I can't go on with this because I feel awful. So I said, i, I got to stop. I'm sorry, I have to cut. I'm too warm. I'm not comfortable. It's just too hot in here. I have to dry off. 
And I got up, and as I turned, I hear Eddie fall on the bed and say, oh my God, I've got to cut the film. I'm just too hot, I can't stand it. The perspiration is just falling down my face. I thought I would die. I'm starting to put you on. Oh, yes, but what I've learned since is that if Eddie likes you, he does yeah. that. He's a good mimic. He's a Wonderful, good mimic. and it takes him like that to watch you, and then yeah. he knows. What are you very good at? What are you working on now? You got something? No, I'm not working on anything now. I'm, I'm contemplating marriage. Yes, well, I understand. Uh, that. Yes. Doing that. But does he uh, contemplate? I get the idea that... Oh, he, yeah? Why am I sounding like Barbara Brock? <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Tell me your secrets. No. <laughs> somebody, somebody else shouldn't do that. <laughs> no, I'm not doing anything right now, but I want to tell you a funny story about Officer and a Gentleman. All right. All right? There was a scene that was cut out in Officer and a Gentleman. It was a survival scene. But we went in, and for the first two months of the film, the prop man was making little licorice bugs. Because in survival, you have to eat whatever you can get your hands on. And in the oh, script, yes. it said that I had to eat bugs with Richard Gere. He had to eat bugs, too. So we had been watching the prop man make little licorice bugs. So on the day that we were going to shoot that, somebody came up to me and said, you know, I think you're going to be eating real bugs. I said, well, I'm not going to be eating real bugs. Richard's not going to be eating real bugs. We get down there, and the director kneels down, and he says to me, we're on a very tight lens. The licorice bugs don't move. He goes, you have to do me a favor. You must eat a real bug. What kind of a bug was it? Well, this was a cockroach. <laughs> so I said, I am not going to eat a real bug unless you eat a real bug. Then I'll eat a real bug. To the director? To the director. Uh-huh. Well, that seems and fair. And Richard's sitting there going... That seems fair. <laughs> he's not saying anything. I'm the spokeswoman on this. So the director comes over, and he's got, like, a Dixie cup, only a big one with a lid, and he takes the lid off, and there must have been a hundred cockroaches in there. I said, all right, you eat one of those, I'll be glad to eat one, because I never thought he'd eat one of these things. He took the bug out, he bit it in half, swallowed the first half, put the other half in his mouth, swallowed that, and said, well. I said, Richard. Richard said, you first. <laughs> so I decide that I am not going to take this bug and bite it in half, because the white stuff comes out. <laughs> So, I decide that I am going to get a lot of saliva in my mouth and drown him. <laughs> Put him in. Good thinking, and then let him walk down. So Did you? I, yes, I put him in my mouth, and I get him in there. First of all, you had to put him in your hand, and then open the hand and grab him by the hind legs, like that, which upset me no end. There's tears running down my face, and the director's saying, keep rolling, you'll never see the tears. I'm focused on her mouth. So I got the bug here, and it's... Legs are going like this, trying to get well, of away. Course. So I pop them in my mouth, and I've got the saliva there, but my throat constricted. I could not get the bug to go down. So it's banging against my teeth. <laughs> May I come out? Right now. <laughs> like this, trying to get out. Well, I swallowed, and meanwhile, we had to do five more takes. Well, that's, that's above and beyond the call, isn't it? Oh, I thought so. And Richard's, Richard's term was next. And he I, have a, I have the standard bug clause in my contract <laughs> with NBC. Well, I always had a no nudity. Now it reads no nudity and no bug eating. Uh -huh. That's it. Good thinking. That's, that's kind of that's freaky. A weird story. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Justin Wilson. Is you really did it? Okay, we are back. Justin Wilson is here tonight. Uh, Justin Wilson is a humorist and a storyteller from a town called French Settlement, Louisiana. He has his own cooking show, seen across the country on public television. He's the author of several books on Cajun life and Cajun cooking, including this one right here, which is called the Justin Wilson Gourmet and Gourmand Cookbook. Would you welcome Justin Wilson? <laughs> see you again. Well, Thank you for coming. see me again, I well, guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> what have you brought us this time? Last time you brought some uh, tasty dishes. Uh, piquant? I remember. Yeah, sauce I remember piquant. That. Sauce piquant. It's a dinner. That's gourmand, not Did gourmand. Ah, uh, well, you know, I'm from the Midwest. Uh, oh, I yeah, know. yeah, yeah. I could tell. Yeah. I'm Midwest, sorry. You know, I'm Mid sorry. Midwest, we went to Ralph's Market to get the Kraft cheese slices in the gourmet section, so I'll give you an idea. <laughs> gourmand. I'm sorry you cut yourself when you shaved this morning. <laughs> Well, I thought you've still you've got a little uh, oh, yeah. stash yeah, there. Yeah. I was just looking at this back here. What do we have here? That is boiled crawfish. 
Now, what's the difference between, I hear some people say crayfish, crawfish. Are they two different things? No, they just don't know better when they say crayfish. Ah, so it is crawfish. It's crawfish. In French, it would be crawfish. Crawfish, yeah. of course. So it's crawfish. Yeah. Now, that's, this is a particular... Uh... Well, I'd like to... The, those aren't bugs, no. Oh, no, they look... It's funny you'd mention that, because they look like large uh, bugs. Oh, they're, they're, they look no. a little bit like shrimp, don't they? Yes, they are. They're kin to shrimp. They are kin to oh, shrimp? Yeah. Now, this is... Uh... They always remind me of a story every time I see them. Well, let's hear the story. <laughs> there was an old mama crawfish took her three little baby crawfish out to see the world for the first time. Uh-huh. And they go across the cow pasture, and they walk about 30 feet, and, and the three little baby crawfish chunk up both their claws and put it in high gear reverse like a crawfish can do. And old mama crawfish say, what's wrong, children? What's wrong? She say, them little children say, what that is, mama, what that is, huh? She say, that's a cow, and a cow don't eat crawfish. Come on, let's go. And they walk 30 more feet, and the little baby crawfish chunk their paw up some more. Shoom, high gear reverse. Mama Crawfish said, what's the matter, Sharon? They say, what that is? What that is, Mama? What? Oh, say, that's a horse, and a horse don't eat crawfish. Come on, let's go. Well, 30 more feet, the old Mama Crawfish chunk up both her claws. Zoom, double high gear, reverse. Little baby Crawfish said, what's the matter, Mama? What's the matter? She said, you see that animal up there, Sharon? They say, yeah. They say, that's a Cajun, and he eats any damn thing, I guarantee. <laughs> it's a Cajun too, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. For people who don't know, we talked briefly about Cajuns. They immigrated from uh, Canada originally, came down? Well, they, they came from France to Nova Scotia. Nova. Then they had sense enough to come to South Louisiana. <laughs> and shall we show this here? Oh, yes, I think we I should. Know. I want to show you how to eat some of that. This is a plate, a large plate. Oh. Well, why do people say that? They go in and eat shrimp. These are just almost, uh, say... Uh, They're beautiful. Yeah. Would you like me to show you how it's done? You know, I really don't know how to do this. I don't think I've ever you haven't? eaten crawfish you before. You just haven't lived yet, you know that? All right. That's a crawfish. First yeah. of all, you do that. Get that fat. Then you take off the first three little uh, deals right here on the, on the front. Yeah. Get that off good. Then you put it in your mouth like that. Uh-huh. Squeeze and pull at the same time. Yeah. And you got your crawfish. But wait, wait. You, know, yeah. so, so. <laughs> you see this right, Jim? Yeah. Reach down in there. And you get that. That's the fat. And you eat that. Well, I don't like the looks of that part. <laughs> why, why is that? I don't know why you don't like the looks of that. I really don't, but that's the best part. Uh-huh. Try it. Yeah. Remember, that's not a bug, no. That's a crawfish. I never like to eat food that looks at me. Oh. <laughs> Both eyes, too, you know. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> now, what do you like start the wrong way? Like like the it. rear end first? Break the rear end for you. Just take it off. I'm going to peel this one for you and give it to you to eat so you'll know. Yeah. Well, like that. Yeah, see that? Oh, yeah, let's try right. that. Very close akin to shrimp. A little more tasty. Yeah, it's got a little more um, bite to it. Oh, yeah. That's very good. You want to try one here, Lisa, with the back legs? The back legs are moving, so... <laughs> don't, let, don't let that try bother one. you. It won't hurt you, though. Just pull off Wait, the no, rear. Hey, what you do? Like, like, like this, baby. I'll break it one. You know, it's, it's really very good. If it's I just... wouldn't peel this for a good-looking woman like you, my wife would divorce me. <laughs> How long have you been married, Justin? This time. Why oh, is he? <laughs> I guess that is the question. Yeah, this I didn't know you'd been married before. Uh, this time, two and a half years. Two and a half years. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you. Good for me is right, man. I agree. Would you... <laughs> do you do uh, Do you do the cooking uh, for you? Uh, yeah, all the time. Really? I do the cooking, yes. Does she I cook love it? to cook. Does your wife cook it all? She's a very good cook. She's yeah. Very good. She, she cooks. Uh, she loves to cook the desserts and things like that. Yeah. I want you to notice that I put my crawfish tie on just for your well, benefit. You do you want, would you like a little? Uh... I would like it. And I know. I know you. You. Would you need them? Oh, I got them. Thank you. Thank you. Darling. These are very good. You bring these all the way up. Now, are these? Where do they get these? In the Gulf? No, those are those are fresh water. Those are were raised where they raised rice. They raised that. They raised the rice and they put the crawfish in there. Those are pond raised crawfish. Well, right. My good friend uh, Wayne Levi I cooked these specially for you. They're very good. You know what? Well, we better set these out after the show backstage. Yeah, that's that's right, true. They, they, they'll have fun. They, they won't travel well because the stagehands will not only they'll eat the plate, uh, <laughs> anything that's not nailed down. That's very good stuff. It is good. What? Over here. All right, no, no. Doc Severinsen. Well, look, he, he, make me in. he knows about it. Slender these. can eat more food than anybody I've ever seen without gaining a pound. This stuff is uh, low calorie. It's not high calorie, is it? I mean, no, it isn't, but I can uh, just breathe real hard and gain three or four pounds mm -hmm. looking at the damn thing. <laughs> what do you like to eat mainly? Uh, depending on what I'm hungry for, I love crawfish. Yeah. I, I love any kind of seafood. 
And of course, I like uh, alligator. You you taste that alligator. He brought some alligator. That was the sauce piquant. Sauce piquant, piquant. Yeah. and it was wonderful. It is good. Very good. Do they ever use a uh, uh, like snake at all? Is that any part oh, of Cajun uh, cooking? Yeah, well, they eat alligator and, and, uh, and cotton jawed moccasin. They cut that up and eat that too. It's yeah. good. People hear, you know, snake, and snake, like rattlesnake, is very good. Very it's tasty. almost like chicken or something. Mm -hmm. yes, but I guess it it's the idea that it's. That's the, that idea gets you like that bug. <laughs> if you didn't know what it was and somebody didn't tell you. Yeah, well, yeah, but the trouble is they, they tell you afterward, and that's, that's worse. Yeah. <laughs> Cajuns are interesting. Do they, they used to have, do they still have mass uh, uh, weddings? Oh, yes, they do down in San Martinville, where Longfellow immortalized Evangeline. They still have mass weddings down there. And they walk down a beautiful alley of oak trees. Yeah. And everybody's married at one time. Yeah. How many cooking shows do you do a week down there? I, I, I do. seen uh, around the country. Well, I've got the, the new, the last 13 weeks is going to start again on April the 6th on public right. broadcasting. And we're going to do a series this summer of cooking outdoors, showing how to burn barbecue yeah. and things like that, how not to burn it, too. Do yeah. the best. And do you, deep fat fry a whole turkey. Do you find that people around the country, outside of, uh, of the South, uh, are catching on to uh, something? Well, we get, well, yes, we get a tremendous amount of mail from California right. and from Illinois and from New York, and uh, in fact, we had a call from Worcester, Massachusetts today. He wanted us to come up there and cook something for hey, him. I'm going to do it to show him how. Hey, it's nice of you to drop by. Thanks for bringing this great food. Well, you're certainly welcome. You might change my whole eating habits. <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll be right back. I did just have a minute or so. I was asking Justin, I mispronounced gour it's gourmand. Gourmet and gourmand. What is the difference between gourmet and gourmand? A gourmet is an epicurean who likes real fine food, and a yeah. gourmand is a PIG hog who eats all of it. <laughs> really? That's right. <laughs> That's the only difference. That's the only difference. Really pigs out. Anyway, the book is called The Justin Wilson Gourmet and Gourmand Cookbook. A lot of uh, interesting dishes in here. Does it just do well? Cookbooks are very popular oh, yes. out there. Yes, it does well. I thank you for being with us. It's always I, a I enjoy being with you very much. Thank you very much. Anytime. I'm glad you got to see me again. Are you, anytime you're up. <laughs> anytime you're up this way, drop in. Okay. Go on, did it. When I come down to Louisiana. Come on. Come By on. By all means, I'll get you to help me cook. Good enough. Thanks, you Justin. need to learn. You're right. Right. Yes. Those frozen dinners can uh, get a little grim. <laughs> Lisa, thank you very much for thank being here. You. And uh, next time we see you, you may be Mrs. Uh, so and so. So and so. <laughs> next time we see you, Ricky, you may be Mr. So and so. <laughs> thank you. Have a nice evening. I'm humbled by that applause.